Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. If you're new to the channel, I'm Clayton Schick and you guessed it, this is the outdoors. Walleye fishing today, one of my favorites. I have a lot of favorites, I know, but uh, it's a favorite of the channel too, of the viewers. We're in a little bit of a post cold front situation here where I believe the walleyes have probably moved a little bit deeper right now. I say deeper, somewhere between that 10 to 20 feet, somewhere in there. They still be up shallow, don't get me wrong, but right now, colder water up shallow, a little bit more uniformed, warmer water, what they were used to, just a little bit deeper. So we're going to pitch jigs and leeches is the game plan today. Now things could change, who knows as I go, but that is the game plan right now, just because from my experience, it's a great way to catch some post cold frontal walleyes. And hopefully we're gonna take advantage of the spot lock. Can't use a talon, because I'm gonna spot lock in about probably 20-ish feet, somewhere in there, and then cast back in towards shore. I'm not casting all the way to shore, I'm casting that first break line, but I will talk more about that as we go. So let's put a hook in the water and catch some walleyes. Got my spot picked. Bait button on the leech. We'll talk about why that's important here right away. And we will cast out and let the games begin. Oh, nice, nice. Right off that edge, which I will talk about here right away. But that didn't take long at all. Second cast, I think, in. Staying down, feels decent. Feels decent. Caught him right off of an edge of a, a sand point that kind of sticks out here, an underwater sound point. And I'll talk about it right away. You can see it on my 360. I can show you kind of what I'm looking for on the mapping, but I'm sitting out here, spot locked, casting into it. And yeah, that's a decent fish. At some point I'm gonna have to grab from my net. Not a giant, but not bad, not bad. It's really hard to beat pitching jigs with leeches. It's so much fun. It's a really good post, nice fish. It's really good post uh, cold frontal scenario. Actually, that's that's definitely bigger than I thought. It's probably like 23-ish, something like that. And I thought it was only gonna be maybe 20-ish, but it's definitely a little bit bigger than I thought. We'll put them on the bump order away. Yeah, 20, 23. It was a nice 20 three inch walleye to start it off. Beautiful fish. I'll catch a couple more fish and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about this point on the graph here and the map, what I got set up. But because of the polarized glasses, I can see light water, dark water, dark water. You likely won't be able to see it in the in the with the GoPro in the shot I have, but polarized glasses allows you to see that water change in terms of uh, the water color change, which will mean like a depth change. So I've got like this underwater sand point that comes out here. I'm gonna kind of cast each side of it, this side here, and then this side here. And of course I'll be watching my graph too to see if there's fish below me or the 360 maybe behind me or in front of me, stuff like that too. But for the most part, I'm gonna be working this point right here. It's just like a, an area where it's almost like in terms of like of a funnel. These walleye are gonna catch this point and then swat and then slide out along it. They're, they don't necessarily wanna go over top of the point because they're gonna feel a lot more exposed for the water temperature and because it's actually really clear today. And if they're up on that sand point, they're very, very visible. So they're more or less gonna use this sand point as like a travel, a funnel. So anything that's like coming in here in this area and cruising the shoreline is gonna hit this point and slide out along it. And both sides, whether they're coming this way or whether they're coming from this way. And like I said, all I'm doing is just casting up either side and then I'm just slowly working my jig back. Sometimes making some far casts, sometimes making some short casts. I'll show that all on the map here right away of what kind of it looks like on the map. So will you have an idea of like something to look for in that sense? Ooh, big pot of fish. Oh, nice. Felt like a pretty small pickup. I don't think this fish got much size. Oh, hard to tell for sure. It's not small, changed my mind. It's a really light pickup. It's a really light pickup, it's not a bad fish. 
after this fish i'm going to slide ahead here a little bit and then kind of explain my situation but i'm watching these fish move on the 360 around this little point it's so cool not bad not bad definitely have to net them definitely have to net them come on nice nice good fish good fish jig fell out already of course barbless it's definitely a little bit better than i thought it was going to be again not a bad fish at all fish two off to a pretty good start nice average is about a 20 incher around there give or take okay like i said i'm going to slide ahead just a little bit because i think a little bit further ahead about 15 20 feet will be a better position for me and then i will uh explain what i got going on here okay so i use the hummingbird lake master map and this is what I, I'm talking about here is I got like this point that's kind of sticking on here, an underwater point. So I'm spot locked, right? Let's turn my, move my finger. It's hard to think which way I gotta move it in the camera lens. Got, I'm spot locked right here. And I'm chucking up in here and here and a little bit here. And I'm bringing my jig back down, back down, back down. Of course, if I see any fish on the 2D, I can easily fish vertical as well. It's a pretty simple idea basically and like i said the fish are kind of like hitting like a wall here where they don't want to go up here and they're just hitting it and moving funneling it same thing here hitting it funneling so it acts as like a nice funnel point right here on the corner and if you look here on the 360 i guess i got a camera going on there i can show you your points off there. i got some weird um uh lines going on here i think that's just from the waves but it's starting to clear out here as i go around so this should clear it out i think but you can see here, look at all these fish right here. Oh, head camera just died. These are all fish right here. This dark spot, that's that point that I was talking about this right there. So all these fish, I'm watching them cruise here, come along, and this point right here on the edge of it is just full of fish steady. So I'm chucking up in here and I'm dragging my jig back down. I'm not sure what the interference or whatever's going on here right now type of thing. It's really weird sometimes with the waves and everything I'm always trying to figure that out but there's definitely got lots of fish just off the left hand side of the boat right now so i better get fishing now I was kind of hoping just to stay spot lock there all day right now but probably about 20 casts later i haven't caught another fish so i think i'm going to just kind of pull myself around slowly with the trolling motor if i mark a pot of fish I'll spot lock and stay on top of them but I have to go to the fish right now. They're not coming to me as much as I had planned or anticipated type of thing. Not to say they won't here at some point. It'd probably be smart just to tough it out. But the, the ants in my pants are getting me. I need to move around a little bit. Nice, right here. Right as I was coming in. A little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. Get me really close to the boat on that one. Easy, buddy. Easy. A little bit smaller, but uh, maybe a, an eater. He may be smaller, but he is an eater. He's supper. Bunch of fish all on the left-hand side here right now. Bunch, 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 bunch of fish. I'll go through some jigs and stuff here in a little bit too and kind of how I hook my le leeches for pitching them out. When you're pitching out leeches and casting them, they tend to fall off the hook. So there's a couple things you can do to to give you a better get her, a better percentage of them not falling off the hook. And then uh, for as for like size of jig, when I'm fishing a little bit deeper, I'll go to a little bit bigger jig, quarter ounce, maybe three eighths, compared to when I'm fishing in shallow. I'm fishing pretty much just a one eighth ounce jig. So I'll let the, the depth, the wind, and if there's any current dictate the size of jig I'm gonna use. But for the most part, I fish like, uh, I fish a one eighth ounce jig a lot. But like I said, wind or a little bit more depth, something like that, I'll upsize a little bit. It just gives you a better feel. It get, like, lets you cast out a little bit further too with that jig. And yeah, that's kind of the, the ticket. 10 pound braided line, eight pound fluorocarbon leader. That's a nice fish right there. It's a nice one. I had to slide ahead just a little bit from where I was where I started just because I wasn't marking any more fish, but I slid ahead and got on top of a bunch of fish again. And this is another, 
another nice specimen right here. I won't measure him, but he is everything of 19 and a half, 20 inches. Decent fish for sure. Okay, I've got a bunch more fish out there before I show the, before I show how I'm hooking the leech, I'm gonna try to cast for these fish because they tend to kind of move on a little bit too. Like I said, I had to slide ahead about, probably about, I don't know, 40, 50 feet from where I was. Found a bunch of fish. There's some on the, uh, right below me as well here. So better get out there quick. I had fish below me. We got a bunch of fish off the left, so we'll just cast out. We'll just cast out. Bunch of fish out here. Look at all those little specimens. Loaded right now, loaded. Like I said, when I was just finishing with that fish, 10 pound braided line and running suffix 131 G core, and then an eight pound suffix advanced fluorocarbon leader. It's been really good. I like the I like the smoothness of the line. It casts really well. Seems to not tangle at all. It's got it's a good line so far. It's first first year using it, and I'm very happy with it. I put it on one of my pike setups, and I was fooling around casting with it a little bit. Oh, you can zing them out. It's pretty impressive. I think I got a fish on me right here. Oh, I pulled through him. I pulled through him. He just had my leech. He must have just had the end of my leech. Look at that. <laughs> There's still, I don't know if I got his lip or whatever, or something like that, or the piece of the leech. I got, I got a piece of them anyway. I just caught wind yesterday that they want to ban leeches and live minnows in Manitoba by 2027. I understand the whole live minnows thing and not transporting them in the water and and basically getting invasive species, zebra mussels, to other bodies of water, I get it completely. But leeches, you trap them out of creeks, ponds for the most part. I disagree with the whole leech thing completely. Like, there's no reason to ban leeches, in my opinion. So, if you agree with me, comment below and say that leeches should not be banned in Manitoba either. I do not agree with that at all. So one thing, dragging your jig and your leech through the bottom, you end up catching some gunk and weeds and stuff like that. And from my experience, it's just best to clean it off every cast. Don't recast out with a bunch of gunk on the bottom or on your hook. Clean it off, recast, repeat, do it all over again. Bunch of fish on the left, bunch of fish. Oh, got picked up. Nice, 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 nice. I love having a rod. You can just feel everything. You just feel a pickup. Feels like a decent fish. Feels decent. It's a uh, good average size today so far. Like really good average size. This isn't small. Like it's not. It's not giant either. But it's not small. Oh baby. Oh baby. Easy. 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 Okay, I'm gonna grab my net while you take a little bit of a run down, hopefully here. Yeah, perfect. And swing over and, oh, come on. Oh yeah, another nice fish. Quality fish today, like super good quality of fish. Everything's over like 19 inches besides the one that I've kept. Okay, what's your guess? I'm gonna guess 21 and a half. What's your, oh, I'm stuck. My, my leg's stuck. Like stuck in the net. Oh, I'm a little bit off. 22 and a quarter. 22 and a quarter. See ya, buddy. Ah, oh, he's a little off. Let's uh, get that jig out of the net and I'll show you how I hook a leech. Catch a couple more fish and call her a day. Okay, we'll grab one of the bigger leeches for this for a demonstration. So, there's obviously a bunch of different ways to do it. Everybody does it differently. I found to get the most out of your leech for casting them where they're gonna stay on. I'll take my leech here. Oh God, I can't tell if this is a great sun angle. I'm sure it's okay. I'll take the, the, the hook point. Uh, this is a barbless. Uh, I guess I go through the jig first. This is a quarter ounce Kalen's Rattle Eye Google Eye, Google Eye Jig. Rattlin' Google Eye Jig, yes. So, and this one, like I said, quarter ounce. I'll take my leech. Right in the end here, I'll go in the top, in the back actually, right near the sucker, push it through, 
right to the end and then I'll turn my jig around and then actually come back through the leech again. It give it kind of like it stays on there really nice, a little bit more of a swimming thing there, I guess I should say, I don't know. I don't even, I got bad English. I'm really bad at explaining things sometimes. But now, most important part, keep that leech on there real good. It's called the bait button. You get these from Cabela's, probably a lot of other places too. Take the bait button, slide it on there, and that'll pin that leech on there. In my experience with casting leeches, that is easily the best way to do it. And you pull it through the water and it just swims ever so nicely there and let it sit and he can kind of swim up a little bit there or whatever, put his tail up. But I double hook them when I, when I hook them for casting. They, if you just single hook them, they'll just come off so easy. Sometimes when you're casting, sometimes when they're coming through weeds, gravel, anything like that, that will be your way to keep them on a lot longer. What a great average size of fish. I would love to have all these size of fish when I did my clay versus clay. Little competition the other day, right? A lot of people are asking who won the clay versus clay. Clay won. He was pretty, uh, pretty happy about his big win. The loser, Clay, he was disappointed. He had trouble sleeping that night, but they're both getting along again. And uh, I'm sure we'll see some more clay versus clay competitions in the future. So both of them are, are happy with their day but Clay is really happy that he beat Clay. Sometimes the fish just grab the back part of your leech and there's nothing you're gonna do about that. So even though I moved forward, I still have kind of a little bit of a point that swings out here as well. There's kind of like two sandbars that come out and now I'm on just on the, the outside one instead of the inside one. So same idea, just a little bit further ahead. Whoa, nice. Nice, nice, nice. That thing ate it and started to come right at me. Love it. Love it. Decent fish again. I'm trying to catch some that are small enough to eat today. And I, oh, this one should be close. This one should be there. I got to catch anything that's under 17 and a half. This one will be really close. Oh, I still got my leech too. When you got big leeches, it's nice that they don't, they don't wreck them. Nice golden specimen, I'll give him a quick measure, but I'm hoping he is about 17 and a half inches. Oh yeah, buddy. Oh, he's over 17 and three quarter, I think. So we're not gonna chance him. He'd be right on the line of a uh, legal fish, but no use taking any chances. See ya, buddy. You are lucky fish. Oh yeah, I kept my leech too. It's a great day. It's a great, great day. It's a great day. It's a great day. Love my walleye fishing. My hands smell like walleye. My rain suit is going to smell like walleye. Oh, I got picked up. Jeez. Oof. Wow. The quality of fish, like, I tell you what, I really shouldn't go anywhere else, but right here, right now, quality fish. Crazy. Again, it's gonna be too big. Look at it spit up its last meal. Whoo! You look like the fish I just caught. You look like the fish I just caught. Whoa! Uh, you're a little bit bigger than the fish I just caught. Okay, maybe not the fish I just caught. This one's definitely a little bit bigger. Golden. What a day! What a day! What a day! Nice, nice. Right behind the boat, right behind the boat. And a lot of people always ask, how would you catch these fish if you didn't have all the fancy electronics? I would use my eyes. Your eyes will tell you so much what to look for in terms of when it's sunny out, you can see all the mud lines you can see cliffs like this and know that it's gonna be probably a faster drop off. Use your eyes and let your eyes dictate where you're gonna fish, right? And then it's just a trial and error. Just spend some time casting out. If you catch a fish there, there's generally gonna be fish there more than just that one time. It's not just gonna be like a freak accident or a fluke accident while you caught a fish that one time. Use your eyes, use Google Earth. Google Earth is a great tool. Hi, geese. 
How you guys doing? I'm trying to film a YouTube video. Could you keep it down, please? Thank you. Where was I? Let your eyes dictate what your, where you fish. I'm probably not going to film a lot of videos without electronics because I have them. And I like to use them. For me, it's fun. I've, it's taken a lot of years to get all this fancy electronic stuff, saved up a lot of pennies and I use it cause I enjoy it. So I'll do some shore fishing videos here at some point, but when I'm in my boat, I'm probably going to fish with my electronics for the most part. But if I was going to a lake that I've never been to, first thing I would do is use Google earth. I'd look at it. Even when I have electronics, I always spend time on Google earth, no matter what. And then when I get to the lake, I would look at like the outlaw, just drive around a little bit, look to see where you have your mud lines, drop off, that type of thing. Your, your shoreline will dictate so much of what the lake is. That makes sense. If you went to a lake and it had no islands in it, you would, I should learn how to stand up in a boat. You'd probably, there isn't going to be a lot of rock humps and all that kind of stuff, right? It's probably going to be more of a basin or a bowl type of thing. Not to say there's going to be some structure here and there, but for the most part, it's not going to have a lot of structure to it. If there's no islands on a lake, if there's lots of islands on a lake, you're probably going to find a lot of like humps, mid lake humps, all that type of thing. Lots of different rock, uh, rock humps, shoals, etc., etc. I think I got another one for the live well. I think I got another one for the live well. Awesome. Awesome. We'll give you a quick measure, but I think you're good for the live well. Nice. Ice right behind the boat. Seems like they pushed off just a little bit deeper here than what they were. I'm not marking them on the 360 up shallow anymore. Now I'm marking some more kind of behind the boat more than anything. So like I said, cold front walleyes or post cold front walleyes, they'll push a little bit deeper. They're just kind of waiting for that water to warm up in the shallows again. And they'll give her hard. Awesome. Well, ooh, I probably shouldn't have boat flipped you. You are a little chunker, aren't you? Holy. That will wrap up this video. Jigs and leeches are a pile of fun. Try not to break my rod. Like I said, quarter ounce Kalen's rattling Google eye jig. They make an awesome casting jig. There's just a little bit of a rattle in it. And of course, when it sits there, it's not rattling at all, but it just got a little bit of a, a rattle. Obviously, I don't know how loud it would be for the fish down there, but it'd be enough, I'm sure. They're a great jig, great jigs. I think I went through everything else. I went through line, I go through rod. This is a Savage Gear, six foot three, medium light, fast action, I believe. Yeah, exactly. Four to eight pound test it recommends. Very, very sensitive rod. I got a 1000 size reel on there, to top it off. So thank you so much for watching and don't forget, get outside. <laughs>